If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with another quick and unfortunately pretty heavily proxied deck tech for you. But don't worry, most of these proxies are pretty good looking. This is actually one that was uh, requested by 097. Zero is spelled out in English, nine is in Roman numerals, and seven is in Indo-Arabic numeral. So, kudos to you on the creative name, I, I give you that. So this is a deck that revolves around, or rather he wanted me to use the card, Teferi's Puzzle Box. Thanks to 9th edition, this card is legal in modern, and this is to be a modern deck, of course. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player puts the cards in their hand on the bottom of their library in any order, then draws that many cards. Whew! Okay, so... This card is not easy to use uh, in a real deck. It is actually very tricky. Uh, I This is a very, very delayed deck tech because I couldn't think of a way to do this for the longest time to make this deck really work. And so the way that I came up with for doing that was Notion Thief, eventually. Notion Thief works wonderfully with Teferi's Puzzle Box. So the way that this works is on your draw step you draw a card and then Teferi's Puzzle Box triggers at the beginning of each player's draw step. They put the cards in their hand on the bottom then draw that many cards. So you draw, then you put those cards back, then you draw that many cards. Notion Thief makes it where if you would draw a card except the first one in each draw step, then that player skips the draw and you draw a card. Or so, that applies to opponents, not to each player. What this means is that you can lock the opponent out of drawing any more cards when you put these two together. So if you have a Notions Thief out, or if you flash it in response to the Teferi's Puzzle Box trigger, then they'll put all of their cards back, and now they can't draw any more cards for the turn. And so they're just, you've mind twisted them. Then on their next turn, they'll draw a card, Teferi's Puzzle Box will trigger, they'll put it back, but they can't draw another card. And you, so you've just permanently mind-twisted them for the rest of the game. But, this is four mana, and doesn't really do anything unless you have the Notion Thief. And so as a result, I'm only including this as a one of. Notion Thief is a win condition, it is a 3-1, it has flash. Uh, but also, now that Ancestral Vision is a thing, now that that is a card, note that this cost 4, Ancestral Vision has to spend 4. So you can get to this, as long as you hit your lands, or your mana rocks, uh, you can get to this before they can pop their vision, and then you'll draw 3 cards. This card gains so much value from that unbanning. So those are our first two, and this is essentially a win condition in the deck, because if they can't do anything, unless they're already so far ahead on board, you will win the game. Period. I guess maybe they could have some graveyard shenanigans, that's possible. Otherwise, no, you, you win the game. So that's one win condition in the deck. The next is, of course, because this is a blue-black artifact deck, Sword of the Make Thopter Foundry. I don't really think that I need to say too much about this. I will say, though, that we have more Thopter Foundries than Sword of the Meek. Three and four, or rather, yeah, three sword, four thopter. And the reason is because Sword of the Meek needs Thopter Foundry, but Thopter Foundry doesn't need Sword of the Meek. It can actually still be a good card in a Tezzerator deck, even without the sword. You can sacrifice the Foundry itself, or any of the myriad of artifacts that we have in here. Uh, so next we have Time Save. Now I should note that this is just a one of. Tap it and sacrifice five artifacts. You can sacrifice itself. Take an extra turn after this one. Look at all these colored artifacts. Thank you, Shards Block. <laughs> uh, so, sacrifice five artifacts, take an extra turn. That's a... Well, obviously that works here. If you need to actually... Well, if you get Sword Thopter Foundry, you've probably already won. Thopter Sword is a win condition. This 
is sort of a win more in that, but it may actually be what you need to do if the opponent keeps wrathing you or if they win without dealing combat damage, so your gaining life doesn't really make a difference. In any case, Time Sieve is something else that you can do, but where it really shines is with our next card. And if you've seen Time Sieve played, you probably know where I'm going with this, back when this was in Extended. Thopter Assembly. Flying at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control no Thopters other than itself, return it to its owner's hand and put five 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. Five. And this comes back to hand, and then you cast it again and get five more, and so on and so forth infinite turns off of this little two-card combo. Now, they are each just one-ofs, though. The Time Sieve is much easier to get than the Thopter Foundry for reasons I'm about to show you, but neither of the cards happens to be all that great on its own. If you're going to sp spend six men on an artifact, you usually want it to be a Worm Coil engine. I include Thopter Assembly because this can be used to turn lock the op to time walk lock the opponent. Um, so there's that. And also flying at 5-5, five, five, that might make a difference. Takes out Delvers, that sort of thing. Uh, one more win condition exists in the deck, and this is, of course, Tezzeret, Agent of Bolas. I only run this as a 3 of. Maybe this should be a 4. He is that good. I mean, what is there to say? There's a reason why they're called Tezzerator decks, after all. Uh, his plus is just insane value in a deck like this. It goes and gets us every kind of card that we want, including lands, because we run Darksteel Citadel. And yeah, he uh, he wins very early with his minus, his ult. Uh, actually, either of his minuses can win you the game, but he only needs to use the plus one turn before he can just win you the game with uh, his ult. And even if the opponent has you locked where you can't attack for whatever reason, say, uh, let's see, I don't know, Ensnaring Bridge, or they have worship out because this isn't damage this is life loss so that is pretty sick uh, it just gives you another way to win the game and now for the the means to these ends I have a talisman of dominance just as a ramp spell sort of speaks for itself I suppose gives us our colors deals us a little damage but not too much, and we can use the colorless fairly often. I guess I actually should include this one down here, because uh, we're going to be getting to it in just a bit. We next run Isochron Scepter, just as a one of. Uh, by the way, this is a four of. Deck list is in the description. Isochron Scepter is just a one of, because we can tutor it up with a card you'll see in just a moment. Spoiler alert, it's Muddle the Mixture. And we have some interesting shenanigans that we can do with it. I'm not convinced... I don't want to run too many Scepters. There's too much artifact removal. Abrupt Decay is a card. But for the, oh look, I can just randomly win this game situation, we keep this in the deck. Even if we can just throw a Mana Leak on it and stall the game, we tend to be a pretty inevitable deck for Modern. Uh, we have Darkness, <laughs> Darkness Isochron Scepter. So it's fog, it's just color shifted fog for the third time. You know, there's fog, there's holy day, and now there's darkness. And when you put this on a scepter, congrats, you just... You may not have won the game, but you in all likelihood have kept yourself from losing unless they happen to pull the aforementioned Abrupt Decay, Kolagon's Command, Kasali Pride Mage, Maelstrom Pulse. Geez, there are a lot of cards, actually, <laughs> that get rid of that. This is why we don't run too many. I'm only trying this as one of each. If I happen to have the Darkness in hand, I'll go for the Isochron Scepter and try to lock them. But that's kind of cute most of the time. Uh, we also put in Mana Leak. We would be running this anyway. It makes more sense when there's Scepter in the deck. We need to stall. We need to hold the game until we can get out our win conditions. Uh, we run a, by the way, four of, we run a one of in soul artifact, just one because we can go and transmute it up, and this has lots and lots of artifacts in it, including the aforementioned Dark Steel Citadel, so indestructible five fives. That's where it's at. 
Of course, that can also be thrown on one of our tokens that we get from, say, Thopter Foundry. Uh, so yeah, f it's a flyer at that point, easy enough. <laughs> I've never crashed in with the Teferi's puzzle box before, but I want to see that win condition. Uh, four muddle the mixtures. We can put it on the scepter, it stops a lot of cards in the format, uh, just through countering, but it also transmutes for uh, Sword of the Meek and Thopter Foundry. It transmutes for Time Sieve, so if we already have the assembly, we can go for that. It transmutes for Isochron Scepter, Mana Leak, if we need to transmute for a ramp spell, we're weird, but it can get the dominance. It can get the talisman. It transmutes for an insole artifact. So this gets an awful lot that's in the deck. We're running a ton of two ofs, and this is largely why. Uh, for more tutoring, we have a fabricate. Now, for... <laughs> I guess you'd say, if you need to tutor up your two drops, get muddle the mixture. For everything else, there's fabricate. And that's exactly what this does. If you need to go and get Teferi's Puzzle Box when you have Notion Thief, if you need to get Thopter Assembly when you have Time Save, you know, whatever the case may be, use Fabricate. It costs essentially the same. The Transmute is blue, blue, one. Fabricate is blue and two. Uh, we also have a Damnation. We have two Damnations, actually. So two Fabricate, two Damnation just to control the field a little bit. We don't run too many creatures on our own, and those that we do run, uh, Thopter Foundry creatures, can come right back with Sword of the Meek anyway. Uh, it would cost us our Notion Thief, but that is the actual only creature in the deck that is a real creature. Um, in Soul Artifact being put onto a Darksteel Citadel seems really sick when you can wrath the board a couple times. Uh, and then we also have Serum Visions, because I ran out of room, and I'm going to put in Soul Artifact up here, actually, in the Wind Condition section. So that I have two rows of eight. Maybe ever so slightly OCD. Not really, not at all, actually. I'm just going to let them not be straight, but I do want it to be a block. So selectively OCD? I'm not actually OCD at all, to any extent. Uh, and then for the lands we have, uh, I run four Creeping Tar Pit, so creatures that can work through Wraths, and this is sort of the Planeswalker Slayer because it's an unblockable three power creature. Not many Planeswalkers can get through that. I run four Dark Slick Shores, gives us both our colors quickly. It's our, uh, Fast land? Is that what those things are called? The rush land? It's a scars land. Next we have our basic land package and the lands that go and get them. We have four blue to deltas. You can make that more blue or black fetch lands if you'd like. We have four watery graves. We have a swamp and two islands. And I think that Island is more important than Swamp. If you see that your opponent might Blood Moon you, you can go for the Islands first, because Transmute, needing Blue Blue for Transmute, seems to me to be more important than needing Black Black for Damnation quite a bit of the time. Uh, also, of course, you have the Talismans to get you out of a Blood Moon lock, so it's not such a great card against this deck. And then we run the two Dark Steel Citadels. Now, it sort of speaks for itself. Indestructible can be made into a 5-5 with Insole and Tezzeret, but I want to talk about something else that you can do. Uh, you could, if you so chose, run Ink Moth Nexus in that slot, and I have seen that done and I consider doing it myself. The trick with running Ink Moth Nexus is that you can't get it off of Tezzeret. Well, there's two reasons. One, you can't get it off of Tezzeret. Uh, this is an artifact all of the time, not just when you use its ability. And so as a result, if you use Tezzeret's Plus and you need a land, for whatever reason, then Darksteel Citadel will work for that. Ink Moth Nexus will not. The second reason is that if you try to use Insole Artifact on the Ink Moth Nexus, that's fine for one turn, but then it falls off, and then it goes back to being a 1-1 flyer. Uh, instead, you can use Tezzeret's Minus One to make it into a 5-5, five five, uh, and that will stay on it. You know? So that is... Uh, one thing that you can do, absolutely. Um, I, that's why I choose Darksteel Citadel 
over Ink Moth Nexus. We do have other passive kill anyway. We have Creeping Tar Pit, um, and we do have the tokens that come off of Thopter Sword. We do have the tokens that come off of Thopter Assembly that can eventually just win you the game by not letting your opponent take another turn again. Um, so, and Infect doesn't play well with non-Infect. Affinity can run it, for instance, because it can make the Ink Moth Nexus on its own able to kill. In just one or two turns, regular Affinity with Cranial Plating can make that a win condition. Uh, Arcbound Ravager will fill the same role on Ink Moth Nexus. But when you're not running a deck that can go all in and make it super powerful like that, in Infect can just be worse than regular damage. Two different types of... it's like running a deck that both mills and does regular damage. You're probably not doing either one as well as you could. And there's an opportunity cost there. Same thing with Ink Moth Nexus. So, with that discussion out of the way, what would the sideboard look like? Probably just a regular Tesserator sideboard for whatever meta you're dealing with at the time. You can try if you think that you can play against this kind of deck. You can try making Isochron Scepter better with more darknesses, uh, or with more Isochron Scepters. I strongly advise against that manner of play, and the main reason for that uh, strong advising is that every deck, every deck in the format, minus what, like mono black and mid range, and even then I'm sure they find a way, uh, has artifact hate in its sideboard because Affinity is a deck. Well, lo and behold, you get hit by a lot of that, too. Um, so it's a bit unfortunate, but you probably can't go too all-in on making your Isochron lock all, the all that much stronger. Uh, but, <laughs> but, you can, play a you can play the blue control game extremely well here. If you're playing against other control decks, I like cards like Dispel and Cryptic Command. I like being able to... Uh, put in more fabricates against certain kinds of decks, uh, but beyond that, obviously Inquisition and or Thoughtseize for combo decks would be good. Uh, that's something that you need because you aren't doing a whole lot against combo. Uh, you can run Chalice on one and it hurts basically nothing in this deck. You can run Trinisphere uh, against combo decks. You can run Thorn of Amethyst. Uh, there, there's a lot that you could run to fight combo, but you need to f use something to fight combo, frankly, because your deck just doesn't do much against, say, Ad Nauseam or Pyromancer Storm, unless you have something like that. Alright, and with all that being said, I hope that you enjoyed this, and I will see you later. Take care, YouTube. Bye-bye.